Hello, oh, I'm David Mobley. All right, we are here at the uh, 2015 uh, Sexual Medicine Society of North America meeting in Las Vegas with Dr. Mobley of Wild Cornell of Houston. He's going to tell us where penile prosthesis came from. Go ahead. I personally started doing penile implant surgery as a resident at Baylor in 1973, which was when the first paper came out that was published by Brantley Scott. The penile implant was actually an offshoot of the artificial sphincter, which was, I think, the true love of Brantley Scott. Things were very different in the 1970s than they are now. The workup for patients was extremely complex. The device itself was much more complex than it is today and much more difficult and challenge, challenging to insert. Uh, for example, we had none of the paraphernalia we use today, such as the uh, inserters, we had no pull-through strings, we had no rear tip extenders, we didn't have quick connects, and it was a very different world. In the beginning, there was a lot of concern in the urology community in Houston and around the world. Is this device really going to be what it seems to be? There was concern in the community that because of the fairly high complication rate early on, that this was something that would never make it to full-time use. I was fortunate enough to believe in the work, go into the community and start doing penile implants, and I've done a couple of thousand or more over the years. And as all of us know, the implants have become very, very successful. We had lectures here at this meeting showing a complication rate of less than 1%, and I can confirm that in my practice. It is the ultimate treatment, and in many ways the best treatment for men suffering, suffering from erectile dysfunction. I always tell my patients, they say, well, it, will it work? I say, it always works. And it is a breakthrough that has changed the lives of thousands and thousands of people all around the world. So he was a real innovator, and it seems like he, like you said uh, during your talk, he had to perspire to make it all happen. In other words, he wasn't embraced when he first got out there. He got a few arrows in his back, it looks like, but yep. tenacious he, and believed in himself, absolutely. believed in the treatment. Yep. It's a shame he's not with us here today. He'd be 85 today, and uh, he would still be recognized and a giant in the community around the world. All right. Well, thank you very much for sharing that history, and we'll see uh, where innovation takes us next. It's my pleasure. Thanks. All righty. Bye.